Hello everyone. I figured since the third season of Mr. Robot has just concluded, I'd uh, come along and do another review type thing for it. Now, I've, done, I've talked about the series before, uh, so I'm not going to do any extensive recaps or anything like that. Uh, the series itself is uh, actually generally well done. Uh, some missteps in the second season, and I believe I've talked about some of those. But they've also done some things that are really entertaining and, and clever, considering that the show itself is something of a uh, technological psycho-thriller type thing. Uh, it it, it kind of defies categorization, because you might think it was cyberpunk or something like that, but it's not. It's not really exactly a thriller. It's not really exactly a mystery. It's not really exactly much of anything. Uh, but it, it, it does seem to have its own tone and theme. Even as it evolves over time, it still maintains its own theme. Now, before I get too much further, I, I should warn you that there are probably spoilers ahead. Uh, so if you haven't seen up to the end of the third season of Mr. Robot, you probably, well, you probably want to avoid watching the rest of this. So anyway, uh, the, uh, the first season uh, sets up uh, a, a tone for the show and really sets up our main character, uh, Elliot Alderson. Uh, and it also sets up some secondary characters, uh, uh, Darlene, uh, Angela, uh, they're the big ones. Uh, and through the course of the first season, uh, it's not clear exactly what's going on. Uh, we do know early on that we've got an unreliable narrator because the narrator himself tells us that he's unreliable. Not in so many words, but he tells us this. So that's an interesting uh, choice, is to give us an unreliable narrator and show us things as he sees them. Uh, and, and that, I think, was, uh, was a brilliant choice for the first season. And then we... It kind of looks like a slice of life and a hack of the week type show for the first few. And then it diverges from that as uh, things start to spiral out of control and the uh, underlying mystery of the series is set up and evolves. And then as time passes, we start to get little glimpses of events from other characters' perspectives, uh, scenes where Elliot himself is not present. And those, there are little subtle hints in those that they're more objective uh, for instance, uh, Elliot has hacked his mind so that everywhere he sees E Corp, instead he actually sees Evil Corp. And that persists through the whole, um, the whole first season, at least. And, and then we get a couple of scenes a few episodes in uh, where Elliot's not present, and we see E Corp instead of Evil Corp, and that starts to give us a clue that uh, Elliot's perspective, when he's on screen, we're seeing Elliot's perspective, and we can't fully trust it. Meanwhile, Elliot's actually talking to us directly, and that's an interesting choice as well. Uh, we're actually the audience cast as Elliot's imaginary friend. Uh, and, and then, of course, there's the, uh, the Mr. Robot character uh, played by Christian Slater, who uh, we don't have any clue who he is uh, early on as either. Uh, and then this all builds up to a couple of major reveals. One, that Darlene is Elliot's sister, which... He's apparently forgotten for some reason. That's, uh, that sets up some awkwardness. Then we have... Uh, then we, when we find out who Mr. Robot is, 
And then when we find out who Mr. Robot actually is, uh, and that, uh, so they, they, they set that up really well. And all through this, we've got Elliot operating to, uh, to create a, to, to well, mastermind uh, a hack to take down e -Corp. And by the end of the, uh, the first season, the hack actually happens. And uh, there's a lot of shenanigans to get there, but that hack happens, and then we essentially get fade to black. Now, the second season picks up after that. Uh, we do get a little bit of a, a WTF moment when Elliot wakes up in, a, in somebody else's car in a parking lot. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a, what? Uh, and then a fade to black type moment. So basically, uh, we've got the cliffhanger for the second season, the setup for it. Uh, now, the first season is really well put together, and the, the tension stays. Uh, it, it's hard to watch something that is this deliberate, and um, it, many people would find it boring, but if you actually pay attention to it, like it's not a show for passive watching, you have to pay attention. And clues were there all along. In fact, I suspected one of the reveals about Mr. Robot uh, some time before it actually happened, and I definitely knew we had an unreliable narrator. Uh, so uh, that actually added some some uh, uh, tension to everything. Uh, but the second season it falls off the rails a bit. It starts out in the same vein as the first season, and it seems to be going reasonably well. And we know at this point that Elliot's perspective is warped a bit, so we're not quite sure what's really going on. But we do know that events are happening from the perspective of other characters, and we get a lot more of that starting in season two. And we actually trace Angela's story quite in quite significant depth. And that gives us a lot more insight into her character. And we also are introduced to an FBI agent, uh, Dom, who is investigating the 5-9 hack, as it's come to be called. And that, uh, that whole investigation is a major thread of the second season, as is the Dark Army and you know, Stage 2 type things and... and and what's going on is Elliot tries to figure out what's going on and he continues his battle with Mr. Robot who has turned out to be his alter ego. Now all of that plays out relatively sanely through the second season. The problem is the framing devices they use and the, the attempt to duplicate the amazing prestidigitation they, they had in the first season for the reveals. Uh, their attempt to do such a major reveal. That, that I think, is what fell flat. Uh, so like for the first half of the second season, uh, Elliot uh, is tooling around doing whatever, and we've got, we've got these pictures of where he is and so on, but it turns out that he's actually been in jail for six months. And... Uh, the uh, antagonist of the first half of the season is was actually the warden and, and and all of that. But the important points during that that uh, the, that sequence there it, are Elliot's uh, fight with his alter ego, and then uh, he gets out and for. A totally bogus sounding reason, uh, in fact, uh, and then things go on and now he's trying to figure out what's going on. What's this stage two thing and where's Wellick and all of that stuff. Okay, so so that moves along and, and things travel along and we start to find out that Dom is a very competent investigator. She's really figured out who's who and who's doing what. But it doesn't quite match with what we think is going on. Uh, and it turns out that she was actually right. Uh, she had things right. And, 
and then when she figures out, uh, there's a nice you got to be shitting me moment when she figures out who F Society is and, and all of that. Uh, and then, of course, there's the F Society members who are uh, running from or trying to avoid the Dark Army. And that, uh, you know, the, a partner in this, in the 5-9 hack. And we start to get some idea about uh, what's doing with the Dark Army and White Rose and, and all of that. And uh, we, we end up with uh, a little bit more of the back and forth among the powerful people, uh, like Price, the CEO of uh, E Corp, and uh, White Rose, the leader of Dark Army. Uh, and we start to see more of what's going on there. And as I said, there's a lot more semi-objective perspectives in play. Uh, and we see basically... Angela's uh, descent into darkness. Uh, and then we have some serious WTF bits right at the end of the second season. And there's a post credit scene in the second season finale, which doesn't seem to fit with anything. Uh, and the payoff for that is not what it looked like it would be. But the payoff does come in the third season. But the second season, for as unfocused as the narrative felt uh, due to the prison sequence and then the yoink moment when they pulled all of that out from under us and we find out he's been in prison the whole time, uh, that yoink moment is, uh, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, they, they, they did that. But... This, the second season also gave us probably one of the most brilliant episodes of anything ever, which was the uh, Full House style sitcom with a cameo by Alf. And the fact that they got the rights to all of the stuff and they got the original voice actor for Alf. I mean, that was absolutely brilliant. And it gave us probably one of the strongest performances uh, from Rami Malek as Elliot that, that we get for the whole series as he says just about nothing for 10 or 15 minutes of screen time yet he's performing actively and, and the whole thing is it turns out it's obviously all in his mind but it's, uh, it's one of the, the most fun sequences on the whole show. Uh, so the second season gave us that. It also gave us some interesting characters to uh, play around with and, and got and brought us Dom, who's a really excellent character. And it focused more on Darlene and her, her uh, experience as her life spirals out of control. Now, there are flaws with the second season, quite a few of them, uh, that at least as of the end of the second season, a lot of them were definite flaws. The third season, however, came along and fixed a lot of the major ones. We get some, some throwaway dialogue that actually fills in some gaps on why things happened the way they were and whose motivation f was behind what. Uh, we get a major uh, flashback sequence that fills in what Wellick was up to for the entire six months that Elliot was in jail, and then some. Uh, we also get uh, get get a, a nice uh, slice of life episode with uh, Elliot going to work at E Corp. Um, <laughs> we get, uh, and then we get more a, a payoff on the. Uh, uh, ominous meeting uh, Angela had uh, with uh, uh, White Rose in the second season and we find out that Angela has been handling both Wellick and Elliot uh, for a while that she's in on the Dark Army thing and then the big thing with season three though is that the storytelling turns out to be a lot more linear. What they do at the start of season three is they take a back, they step back a bit 
and we get introduced to a fixer who uh, is the guy that's been orchestrating some of the coincidences that seemed uh, implausible. Now, if somebody's orchestrating them, they're less implausible. So we find the... Uh, we, we follow the fixer for a bit, and, uh, uh, and that's how, uh, say, uh, Elliot and uh, Darlene get away from a, a sticky situation. Uh, we get a whole bunch of, of uh, sequences like that, and they, they back up and they fill in backstory. Uh, the stuff that we should have seen during season two, they, especially the first half of it, we see more of what was going on. Uh, and then once they've filled in a lot of that, that backstory, now they move along and the storytelling from there is basically linear. Uh, with the odd flashback as uh, Elliot figures something out or somebody else figures something out. So uh, it, that more linear storytelling actually makes it much easier to follow. And, and since there's no benefit to uh, non-linear storytelling with what's going on, and there's no benefit to the prestidigitation of the first season anymore, because the big reveals have been done, uh, we, uh, we didn't need that anymore. We could just have a nice linear uh, uh, telling of the story. But we also see that Elliot has, uh, ha has started to normalize a bit. He's starting to uh, straighten out. And not, not that his alter ego's gone away, but he's starting to come to terms with things. He's not dealing with the drugs thing anymore. He's, he's not doing the drugs thing anymore. He's... He's stabilized a lot. And where in the first season, Darlene seemed to be the stable one and Angela seemed to be the stable one. Uh, now we see that uh, Elliot is the stable one and uh, Darlene and Angela have gone off the rails. Uh, and uh, and uh, that is an interesting switch up. And, we start to see Elliot come to terms with himself and his alter ego. And by the end of the third season, he's come to an accommodation with himself. Uh, meanwhile, uh, events have completely broken Angela as she finds out that she was partly responsible for 71 buildings blowing up and countless lives lost. It totally shatters her, her soul. And, uh, you know, I have to give Portia Doubleday immense credit for the performance uh, that she gave in the last several episodes of the third season. It was absolutely heart-wrenching. And it needed to be. It was, the situation was. But you know what? As, even though they went to a linear storytelling method with the odd flashback, which is much easier to follow, they still managed to pull out a couple of huge reveals by the end. Uh, some of the stuff that, that the reveals were not surprising. A bent FBI agent was misdirecting the investigation or, you know, basically sabotaging Dom at every turn. That didn't surprise anybody. Uh, but it certainly explained the incompetence of the investigation when you've got such a competent investigator running things. Um, so, you know, there was, there was things like that, but we get a lot more insight into the Dark Army as we see more scenes from White Rose's perspective and uh, her minions. We see a bit more uh, from uh, uh, Price's perspective, the E-Corp CEO, and we see more of the machinations and uh, uh, consequences of those. So we see a lot more of that. But there's, there are a couple of big events in the, in the season finale. Uh, there's a massive reveal about Angela. Uh, she gets basically a Luke, I am your father type reveal, uh, which actually makes a whole bunch of other things make more sense. Uh, it makes a lot of the apparently illogical choices make sense. Um, 
we also uh, we also get a bit of a reveal about White Rose, and uh, I'm not sure that we still we have even anything even remotely resembling the full picture. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure that we're not going to veer off into fantasy realms at some point in the future with the show. Uh, you know, maybe we're going to find out that there is magic or something like that. Although they haven't telegraphed that at all, so I doubt it. Uh, but there seems to be some serious delusional magical thinking on the part of White Rose. And that's been imparted to the Dark Army. Um, and there is a heartbreakingly tragic development for Dom, which uh, I think will reverberate through the fourth season. And uh, while she was sort of helping Elliot right at the end, she definitely uh, wants to kill Darlene. And uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's an important uh, development. Uh, but it's certainly going to affect things going into season four because she's now in a position. She needs Elliot. And she's going to potentially need Wellick as well. Uh, I think Wellick's still alive. I can't remember. Uh, they offed so many characters through the course of the third season, I can't remember who's left. Um, but she's going to have to, like, Dom is going to need Elliot. Uh, and Elliot has, uh, he has managed to outmaneuver White Rose, manipulate White, White Rose, and, and that, um, that's definitely a, uh, is something that's going to have consequences. Uh, but he took a gamble and it paid off. Uh, something that even Mr. Robot didn't think was going to pay off. And then he's the, uh, well, let's do something astounding here, uh, part of uh, Elliot's uh, personality. But um, a lot of the characters that were annoying or otherwise causing trouble have been eliminated by the end of the third season and so has the rest of f society like everybody that's left of f society is elliot and darlene so uh, there's almost nobody left uh and i think season four is going to need it, it's going to be a case of uh, price angela elliot Darlene and Dom are going to have to come together uh, and they're going to have to work together to to beat the Dark Army and I think that'll make a very compelling narrative uh, when season four starts uh, like how do we get them to that point uh, it will be it will be interesting and Elliot has now heeded a call to war uh, he had a, a really nice, of course, this means war moment. And that, that means that the whole dynamic is going to change going into the fourth season. Uh, so it will be very, very interesting to see. And we know there is a fourth season. It was renewed for the fourth season ages and ages ago. So, uh, so anyway, uh, to sum up, uh, the first season is a bit slow building, but the payoff is definitely worth it. Uh, things happen, and it gets intense by the end. The second season feels a bit off. Uh, it goes off in the weeds, or it feels like it's gone off in the weeds. Like You don't know what's going on. It's just tooling around uh, in circles or something like that. But it turns out, if you work through it, there's a payoff in season two for other characters and then season three actually comes along and fills in the important gaps that season two left behind and 
it kind of redeems season two. Thing, things see, start to make a lot more sense. With the introduction of the Fixer, and much more focus on what the Dark Army's up to, it's actually substantially improved the overall narrative. Uh, it, it's amazing what you can do with some strategic flashbacks and uh, and you know, character development and, and so on. And even with the uh, more linear storytelling and less gimmicky storytelling, they still kept the style of the show with the off-center shots and and things like that. They still kept all of that. And it still feels like Mr. Robot, even though the characters have moved on significantly from where they started. Uh, interesting enough, uh, one of the uh, most annoying tropes in fiction is the white room, uh, where you start out with a character that's in a white room that knows nothing about what's going on around them at all, maybe not even who they are. Mr. Robot is actually a giant implementation of the White Room uh, starting at the beginning of Season 1. Because even in the season finale of Season 3, Elliot is still reacquiring memory of what actually went on. So the White Room is fading, but it hasn't completely Uh, and, you know, it's something that's very often done poorly, but I think they did that to great effect with Mr. Robot. So I have, I have great hope for the fourth season and maybe a fifth or sixth or seventh if it keeps on going. Uh, and, and it's a testament to not just the showrunners, but the acting talent as well. Because they're all, all the main characters, they're very, very good at their characters. Anyway, that's really all I want to say. Uh, basically, I was starting to have some doubts about season two, you know, after season two, but season three has redeemed it. Uh, I don't have the doubts anymore. I'm pretty sure the story is going to be compelling. It's going to be good through season four. I do have some questions about what was up with the post credit scene on Season 3, uh, but I think that was mostly the setup for uh, Season 4, so uh, that's obviously not supposed to make sense, and I'm not sure that uh, all of the characters we see on screen in that post credit scene are actually there. Uh, they've established a precedent that that might not be the case. So uh, it's just that the point of view focus character isn't the one you would expect that from. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but it looks interesting because they've definitely thrown a curveball into things. And we'll see how that, pay, that pays off. And it could be eight episodes into season four before it does. Uh, you know, that could, it, could, it could be a flash forward, kind of like the post credit scene at the end of season two was. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, so uh, basically my, my recommendation, if you like the uh, techno, you know, uh, hacker type stories with an element of mystery and uh, uh, psychology, and the thriller aspect with a bit of gore uh, mixed in, then this is the show for you. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all for, for this time. So, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, you know, the usual. I also have a Patreon, so you can try that out if you want to support the channel, but don't feel like you have to. And if you watch this far, thanks for watching.